Oh, that's right. DM in the PM, baby. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to DM in the PM, the show that is not near as sexually charged as that intro might suggest it is. Though, uh, that could all change today because I have a very, very special guest. You probably already know him from his very popular uh, YouTube channel, um, if not from there, from his wildly successful Kickstarter campaign for Alcander's Almanac of all things, Dungeon Coach. Thank you so much for sitting down with me, brother. How's it going, man? What an intro. You, I did, I have not seen the intro, but I can't wait to see that now. Uh, oh, that, that's DM in the PM. I never made that connection till now. So it, it is going to get spicy tonight. It's, it's going to go. get spicy. I think it's going to get, I mean, how can it not get spicy with dungeon coach in the house? Some homebrew spice. Some you know homebrew spice. It. it is the, it the uh, brew. spice it up. There it is. There it is. Um, no, man. I mean, uh, how are things going? Things, uh, it seems like they're going well for you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, things have been uh, crazy. School's winding down, so that's always nice to kind of start the summertime to be able to kind of breathe in some more homebrew air and finish up with all the other stuff that's going on. So, yeah. I, yeah, I hear I'm that one of my man. one of my players uh, at my table is a uh, elementary school teacher, and he's Ooh, he's yeah, yeah. desperately clawing towards the light at the end of that tunnel. So, <laughs> um, well, very elementary cool, man. I think, well, I mean, for starters, I definitely wanted to uh, say, because I did mention uh, Alcanders in the intro there, um, mm -hmm. massive, massive congrats on the success of that. Thank funded you. in, what, a it matter of minutes, fully funded in minutes. Uh, Literally, it funded in, I think, uh, four minutes and 58 seconds, ooh. I think, was the was the official shot clock. And uh, I, I was literally, I, I started, it went live, I called my wife in, and then, like, we looked at the thing, and it was like half, I was like, wait, what? what? And the thing was just rattling through. So, I mean, the support from the community has just been crazy. Yeah. Uh, I, I was absolutely blown away. And they unlocked all this different stuff that I've been super excited. We've been diving through it. And yeah, it's been a journey the last year, but it's crazy now to start to see the book come in through uh, chapter three finished today. So wow. I was like, oh, okay. And then fours. Yeah. So yeah, it's exciting stuff. Exciting right on, stuff. Man. Right on. Well, again, I mean, it, it, I don't think it could have, uh, it could have happened to a more deserving person. I, I know <laughs> I have been enjoying the content for a year and a half, almost two years now. Um, Appreciate that. And uh, obviously <laughs> I am... Uh, not in the minority in that regard. So um, <laughs> I definitely appreciate you sitting down with me today. I think today, I mean, sure. you have been a madman churning out homebrew, homebrew, homebrew for all of us to <laughs> plug into our games, to, to right, play with right, and right. kind of tweak and make our own even. Um, what we maybe have not touched on yet is mm -hmm. in your mind, kind of the, the when, the where, the why of homebrew, right. um, bringing that into our tables um, and I, I'll probably kind of toss it straight over your direction. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, when at, at my table, the, the the two primary reasons that I think of implementing homebrew is to fix something that feels clunky mechanically. Right, um, right. Or right. bringing something into the game, tweaking something about the game that is going to enhance the immersion for myself and my players at the table or, sure. or investment in, in that space. Um, that's me, but I, I'm sure you've got your own <laughs> thoughts on that. Maybe you even some elaborations, but well, yeah. talk with me a little bit about like, that. Like, I think the big thing to set the, to start things off with, uh, first of all, I do agree completely with both of those two, especially the first one, but we'll get to that in a second is I, I, one of the things that one of the most comments I get is uh, you should play another system. If you're homebrewing so much, if so much is wrong with fifth edition, you should go play Pathfinder, go play <laughs> Pathfinder uh, 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 or D and D 3.5 is another, yep. th th that one, all the crunchy stuff in there, but th 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 they, they don't understand unless they truly have seen all my videos and, and see the message that I try and get across. And I'm, I'm glad you even said it in your little uh, intro there is use and tweak. Like I want everyone to tweak the stuff that I give. I probably don't want you to use it exactly as is because I'm not, I'm me, I'm my group and my table and it works good for me, but right. we're not the same person. We don't have the same values and goals and themes and everything. Uh, and from a mechanical perspective or from a tonality theme perspective. So I try and give so much so that you can pick and choose the ones you like, or maybe shake it up a little bit enough to be like, you know what? 
that might be cool if we allow this or if we don't like the first video that pops in my head is counterspell and mm -hmm. there's so many components to counterspell right and there's so many things and i and many rants that i went on about <laughs> counterspelling a counterspell and my coach brain of the reaction time it would take to counter a reaction with somebody it, anyway um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or you're casting your own spell and you can somehow stop it and counterspell somebody and then anyway right so yeah. i'm trying to challenge that mindset of the default rules as written not to go against it or throw it down but to try and be like hey let's th shine some light on it what do you think about this and then maybe somebody watched that counterspell video and i pitched my version and maybe they liked one aspect of it sweet cool my job's done i feel great i have tried to make your game one notch better and you have a little bit one notch, notch more fun. So right, right. And it's and not designed to use all of them for sure. Yeah. And that modularity really is one of the things yeah. that I have come to appreciate about, you know, all of the content you're putting out on YouTube, all of the publications that you're doing is that, um, and, and part of this, I guess, is probably a credit to, uh, let's say a, a pseudo modular design within 5e itself yeah, is that you sure. can kind of plug these modules in for and sure. find a, a vibe that really works for what your yeah. table wants to get out of those experiences. So it's 5e. It's so easy to homebrew, right? And then if I were to follow some of the, the people saying, go to another system, I, I'd be homebrewing that system, <laughs> you know, like it's the right, system right. that the whoever the writers of the edition were, no shade thrown to them. They made a game that's for the masses, right? And right. Uh, the, the, I mean, maybe it's the teacher in me is that I don't teach the same way to the same kid across the board. Why don't you get it? Well, I'm going to customize and tweak it around for the person, right? right so, right. and I love that analogy. I mean, I, you know, it's uh, with being. Uh, I, I, that's relatively new information to me. I didn't realize you were a teacher until until relatively uh, recent. <laughs> yeah. I think I actually inferred it a little bit from one of the videos that you posted. I think it was one of your shorts yeah, where yeah, you yeah. maybe were even in the classroom. Oh, right, right, right. Um, yeah. Oh, but my God. but it, I, in my mind, I was going, is <laughs> yeah. he a teacher? Is he, right. is he has some teacher. crazy, uh, <laughs> is he, he's at some crazy uh, dungeon academy? Uh, who, you know, who, who knows what he's up to? But um, but I, I think that is a really uh, apt analogy for, for DM sitting down is your players much like students they mm -hmm. are all coming to the table for different reasons and part oh, of your job sure. as a dm is identifying those reasons right. and finding ways to enhance those and if the core rules do very little to to give to that player what they came right. to the table to get Ooh. um you know Ooh. all the more reason to start time out time oh, i love I'm it the... i got my i got my time out yes that that's, what it, that's what i'm talking about that's what i'm talking about Anytime I'm like, should I, this is the time I got to throw that time out. <laughs> I, oh, I love funny. it. Um, so the first thing this is popped in my head for the, you started talking about mechanics and like each player is different. So to get into a little mechanics uh, aspect here of each player at the table, I have a player, I have the, the four players at my table right now uh, with every week, uh, homebrew, homebrew uh, session is two players, absolute veterans. They know the book inside and out. They are good to go. They have, uh, the, the one that's usually plays a spellcaster has this board with magnets that track spell slots and cooldowns. And he's got little markers and tokens and nice. he's ready to go. Right. Yeah. And then I have a brand new player who she's never played D and D before, just heard it passively through me at school. And then I have another player who's very casual and just loves it, loves the role play aspects of it, loves a lot of other cool stuff. Right. So that's a very different table. So yep. the side of the table that are the veterans that have the tools and mechanics and love the mechanics, my goodness, the mechanics that we have for, that me and the player have set up for his druid slash warlock slash wizard type character. Okay, which, okay. We could get into that. Enough but, said, um, I think. I mean, I think you're talking <laughs> right. to veteran player there. <laughs> well, and like his action economy is crazy. And he has this like, he has a bonus action economy that's different than his action economy. And like, he has to track things and like, he can only do that. And so he's got it all laid out. He tracks spell components. He does everything. And that's yeah. all... A collaboration between me and him now there's not a chance that i would do that same thing with the brand new player right in fact i have talked with the brand new player and i've completely redone she's an artificer and i completely homebrew redone all of her magic to just be items that she has and she can use them like items so gotcha. when she okay. picks a spell I don't even tell her the spell. I, I give her like, hey, this kind of does that. This kind of does that. This kind of does that. And then I 
homebrew her a magic item that's essentially that, and it just makes a lot more sense for her, and she can do whatever she wants with it, right? So the jump spell gotcha. is actual literal boots that you can attach to people around their ankles and stuff, right? And gotcha. if she wants to expand very that, cool. she can make another set of boots. So it's very simple. So I have I am introducing homebrew mechanics for the brand new player to make the game easier, and I am introducing homebrew mechanics for the veterans to make the game harder or more intricate or their right. own play style right so yeah right. yeah well and what one cool thing you know especially about what you just touched on there is especially with your veteran player is um as obviously that uh that character has gotten more and more complex you're talking about mm -hmm. kind of this mm -hmm. dual layer action economy that's taking place <laughs> but it also sounds like he's really really on top of his game um, right. which is which is crucial for a you know a player right. like that who um and and to your point trying to trying to cross that boundary where all of a sudden right. a brand new player is trying to do those sorts of things with the action economy mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. you know could have detrimental effects let's say to the pacing of the entire table oh, and, and right, things like that right, so right, right. i i hadn't really thought about homebrew uh as a as a method of easing the grade into the game i love yeah, that uh, sure. I, I really love that sure. uh, way of thinking about it and, and one thing that you said there specifically talking about homebrewing for players um, talk with me a little bit about, because, because I, pseudo lump, uh, homebrew into kind of two categories. Let's say a player Ooh. initiated homebrew versus oh, a DM okay, yeah. initiated mm -hmm. homebrew. You know, your player comes to you and says, I've yeah. got this great idea, but it's just, I can't, you know, I've got, I've got <laughs> right, bolos, yeah, yeah. I've got the player's right. handbook. I've got, I've got it all. I can't make it work I the love way it. I want to. I love that. Um, and so I laugh because that excites me. Like that moment excites me when a player they're invested, they're engaged, they want something, they have a vision, they have a passion for it. Like I want to do this thing. What, how can we make it happen? I'm like, let's go. Let's figure it yes. out. Let's figure it and out. And that, I, I mean, one of the things we talk about on split screen D and D a lot is, uh, from the DM perspective, anyways, is when you identify engagement at your table, don't pour weed killer on that. Don't you know? <laughs> so the rules, the rules say you can't. So anyway, yeah. Uh, and yeah. and there's so many places, you know. <laughs> I mean, through through homebrew, through. Uh, the various pillars of gameplay where mm -hmm. you can find a player who's really reaching out and going, I love this about the game. Um, For sure. and, and, and homebrew is such a great place to be able to hand them something that right. the, the good people at wizards simply did not right. conceive someone might need. Well, and if it's no, not even shade to them for it too, because they're doing it to everyone, right? You know? Oh, like absolutely. Your audience absolutely. is the world, so you you almost can't do that. The book would be this thick, and then it'd be like, oh, and it'd be less, and it'd be too intimidating for people to come to. So, totally. So, uh, some the th things have popped in my head for, like you said, the three pillars and players engaging with certain pillars more than the others, and implementing rules, like you're saying, is a, the interesting thought. Um, so one player really wanted to start his own business. And I love this 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 story. I love that this is actually one of the players at the table, the player that loves the role play, right? Um, he wanted to start his own business and he wanted to be a leather worker. I was All like, right. where did this come from? Where <laughs> on earth did this left ball, what, what curve ball, whatever, out of left field? Yeah. So um, I implemented an entire economy of an entrepreneurial mathematical system of how you can put in money and gain money and pay people nice. and how much do you pay them and how much money do you put in, how much money do you invest and how that money comes out and then the the, the, the net gains and loss. I had the whole thing for him. Yeah. And it took me some time to work that out right, right and right. i based it off of real life and stuff and, sh and made it very simple like 50 percentages and quarter percentages and stuff to keep it simple but um he loved it he ate it up and then i found a way to bring that into the big campaign big tie-in for other stuff to to connect it to the campaign and not just have this thing that he was doing i was like okay he's getting all this gold but like why like i have to make gold matter now because he's getting gold so right he was able to solve a big problem and he, it was something like 50,000 gold or something crazy. Yeah, yeah. And he just like dropped it like a badass. And I, he's <laughs> like, I got it. No worries guys. And they're like, where'd you get this money from? The players had no idea. And he's like, every, you know, I was like, you know, every time he goes into a town and he keeps going to the leather shops, he's like spreading his entrepreneurial seed across the lands. Very nice. and he has all this money now. So yeah, like implementing that, it doesn't have to be combat. Like we're talking about all the mechanics of the veterans and or lightning mechanics for the new people. It's all, all the pillars so i totally agree yeah yeah now do you think of implementation of homebrew differently when you're talking about implementing it something grafted onto 
one of the players, i.e. a class, mm-hmm. a subclass, feats, um, right. a business endeavors. Uh, do you think <laughs> about <laughs> do you think about that differently than uh, than, for instance, a, a let's say a DM directed introduction like a like a system rework right say a homebrewed monster or or homebrewed that affects everybody monsters i really like that that i i've never even i've never purposely thought of the difference of like this is a homebrew that only affects you versus a homebrew that affects the whole table because that is very like you should treat those differently and i just i mean subconsciously i for sure i treat them differently but really putting a pin on the difference there i really like it i just really love the (laughs) Uh, feet subclasses business endeavors right? <laughs> i mean yeah you know, that's only the, the, the coolest part and something i love that you said there is that you were able to take that and tie that into something broader in the campaign right. you and, have to and whether through homebrew or not i think one of the one of the really special parts about being a dm is mm-hmm. is when your players begin doing things that you couldn't possibly account for right. um, you know starting uh, becoming a leather mogul uh, right. <laughs> you know, and, and that yeah. you making know, for, it matter. Yeah, yeah. And, and making that matter and making it something that, you know, 10 years from now, they're going to go, Hey, you know, remember when I'm throwing yeah. out a name, I don't know the name, but remember when Randy was a, a leather mogul in our five E campaign, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, you know, he, he what do you have a right. like quarter million gold pieces? Like, I mean, that, you know, it's, <laughs> it, it's, it's amazing how, how much right. those things, uh, transcend the campaign themselves oh, for sure because they were so sure. player directed and that's uh, well, that's a really cool and thing. to tie into so that you have the to put a little bow on that thing is the thing how i tied it back in is there was this overarching spreading evil around the, across all the lands and they had to go out and get to it and one of the other players loved to build an army he wanted to have the fantasy of building this army of troops well he had an army of troops but how does he get them across to all the different parts of the land well, turns out Daylar, aka Randy, in in your story, okay, <laughs> um, had built a trade network for his business for across all the lands, and it. he used the trade network to put the guard, and they just shipped them all out, and they it was a, it was I just got chills again. It was like a brilliant uh, thing. Now I purposely knew that that like I I tried to puppeteer that into existence of creating a problem that could be solved like that. But then as soon as the players, all the pieces fell in front of them, like. And they, they found, they figured it out. And that was a huge moment for them at the table for those two players to kind of come together. So yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah so th- that is definitely one of those, uh, super rewarding, both from a player standpoint, right. for sure. But, but from a DM standpoint, right. um, there are, I think those moments where you know that you've gone out of your way to instantiate yeah. something that right. becomes, uh, you know, uh, that it was like two years in the, the making. World. Yeah. Right, yeah right, right. Absolutely. I love that. So to the question now of the the individual homebrews versus the group affected homebrews, right? Is I like to make sure that the homebrews that I implement individually don't slow down the game for those that it doesn't affect. You know what I'm saying? If I have the super veteran with all the different mechanics and stuff and all the different action economy, I want to make sure that that doesn't slow down because of so many things that he can do. And there's all these checks he has to make before the things happen. No, no, no. It's almost streamlines it in a way. You get this action, you get a bonus action. Which one? This one? Which one? This one? Cool. And you're moving, right? Yeah. yeah. Does it I, s- slow things down? I, I really like that. And again, one, one of my other notes and kind of thinking about this conversation with regard to your entire body of work is I think mm-hmm. you have put so much emphasis on... Uh, streamlining and simplifying yeah. through Efficiency. homebrew, um, mm-hmm. which it's very easy to, I don't remember the exact quote. I've got a, 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 a software background, but there's, there is a, a, a popular quote and I can't think it of off head, but it's basically <laughs> any idiot can th- make things more complex. It takes a genius right. to make things simple. Um, oh, for sure. And you can make things crunchier. Like, Oh, let's add a check here for this and a check here for that. Like a grapple system with all these. Yeah. 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 That's more accurate and more immersion. Uh, yeah. 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 And then the second you start rolling it at the table and you see your players checking out, you go, okay, right. m- maybe something more streamlined will keep them keep <laughs> right. them more engaged. So um, right. definitely nod to the fact that I think you have been very successful in in Oh, what I appreciate you've that. It's good to hear. In uh in in it being implementable but not over complexifying <laughs> right. uh, things right. at the table. So I really like that. So 
Um, and even the players, so there's the veteran, and even they're not s- slowing down the game. And the new player, the homebrews I implemented for the new player, makes it easier because it, they don't have to sit there and like, uh, you know, and I even have write out like a tree diagram of like, what you, can you do with your action? I could do these things. Okay, you know, so a list of items and the specific things, list of bonus action items, list, you know, so it's all very clear to keep things going, right? Uh, and the the economy, the, uh, the, <laughs> the business endeavor thing, that in entire homebrew we did off camera off off table like we did i did okay. behind the scenes myself yep he's you know it, during the gameplay would say he goes and does stuff and then he would write me pieces of paper and hand me hand me money which was his deposits or whatever he needed to do i'd take them and i'd crunch the numbers later you know yep. i'd be an accountant after the hours right so it never affected anybody else and it didn't take me that long it literally took me like probably two minutes to just book, book keep, do his bookkeeping for him right, and then right. move on but that's he, the whole he spotted you a few gold game. pieces for the work at least come on <laughs> no i there's tax for sure. There's <laughs> okay. There you go. There. You go. I mean, if you're cooking the books, anyways, I mean, he doesn't know what's coming in, what's going out. So, um, no. But what, uh, what I love that you touched on there, um, and and this is maybe a hair off topic of the homebrew, um, mm-hmm. but it, but certainly something that that uh, especially new DMs, but but many DMs may not be thinking about is is really how much of the tedium that could go into an endeavor like running a business and expanding right. that network doesn't have to play out right at the table for it to still be right. meaningful and and right. active um and i i love that i i certainly there's there are aspects of our table that that uh we you know i do my best to implement away mm-hmm. from uh just again oh, to, right. to keep pacing going um right. I, and i i don't want to i don't want to pivot too hard here especially if you have more to say on, on that subject but oh so the group the group thing with the group thing yes, so yeah. I'll, I'll say this real quick then so if the home, I, I also want it to be to where the players can, if they want to, engage with that individual homebrew. So if somebody else wanted to start a business, they could just let me know. If right. somebody else wanted to have more intricate mechanics, they could just let me know. Um, uh, one of my barbarian players kept tackling things, and I'm like, oh my. Uh, tackling sucks in Dungeons and Dragons. It's just a bad <laughs> idea. Nothing happens. He's from a barbarian it. after all. So I, mean, I, I have a full blown tackle homebrew. If you tackle somebody, this is how it works. Right. And then it was cool and he loved it. And then a f- couple sessions later, the other player was like, man, I'm going to tackle him. And he's like, whoa, they're going to pull the bard on. Let's go. So then he's like, nice. and he does it. And it's the same system, the same mechanics, and it, it works for them too. And I, funny that I say that, now in this campaign last week, uh, one of the other players tackled, and they're like, ah, and they're like you're doing, doing it. <laughs> yeah. So so nice. it's they can engage with it or not. But systems like arrest system or systems like, uh, any any sort of thing that's going to affect the group without choice, like they have to engage with it, they have to have it over them. I just make sure that the group's okay with it beforehand. Or um, it, it, my players in this group, I have trust me well enough to where I just kind of say how it goes, right? And they go along with it, and they know to talk to me individually. And we have enough of a rapport to where. I'm not going to throw something out there that I think is crazy. And if I did, I would have talked to him beforehand. So if I don't, they go with it. Yeah. And then if I do throw something down, it's crazy. And th- they'll talk to me afterwards and I will adapt and change. And even on that note too, one thing that slipped through the cracks of, of, of all this is that veteran player with all the intricate mechanics. Oh, we break the game all the time, you know, <laughs> like, right, so, right. all right. And we got a sweet tweak and change and twit. And like, we'll talk after and be like, dude, that was broken. Whenever you did that thing, that was nuts. Now, cool and it makes sense in the story because this is a big moment and your team was at so this adrenaline like it totally checks out thematically but let's kind of bring it into check a little bit or yeah. maybe it's the opposite and he was getting destroyed by something and then uh he even got to the point where things were going so bad that he like turned away from his warlock patron and was like no i'm done and it turned into a story beat in this whole thing and it put so yeah. anyway I the homebrew and balance of things represents itself through the game too into the story into this but is also a open conversation between us that makes sure that he feels good. I feel good. I don't feel like he's too strong. He doesn't feel like he's too weak and we're good. So yeah. yeah. And I want to touch on two things there before we kind of pivot into the next aspect of homebrew, because yeah. um, there were two, one that I think kind of could even slide under the radar, but should not 
should not go without note your description of your table and kind of the trust that has been fostered at the table that yeah. they know you're not going to bring something to them that is just ludicrous and stupid. And, you know, I mean, right. presumably they know you're not trying to win D and D or, or they wouldn't be at your table <laughs> right. for long. Right. Um, right. That, you know, I definitely think that that should not be understated. We've touched on that a couple of times in split screen D and D is how important getting to that place as a DM and as your players, finding that trust so that you can have that fluidity to bring homebrew into your right. game without having to have a board meeting. Uh, Explain to, yourself and yeah. defend and counterpoint. Count, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the second point was, um, and and uh, almost verbatim, we talked about this in our uh in our homebrew episode was uh, from the DM perspective, don't be too proud to go, oops, I'm, I'm that homebrew is too oh. strong. I messed that up. I mean, and, and, you know, yep. as a player to be, to be yep. understanding that we as DMs, we're trying to bring awesome stuff into the game. And sometimes we get a little overzealous in that process. And so don't hold it against us when we go, Hey, we're going to need to scale right. that back. Uh, the, the wizard in our group has a completely homebrewed subclass and one nice. of her abilities uh, allows her to regain spell slots uh, uh -huh. when killing enemies. And it was Ooh, just a okay. typo okay. on my part. It should have read uh, an enemy that you, uh, uh, a spell that targets an enemy. That was the criteria. But it, oh. in, in the write-up I did, I just, I was loosey-goosey yeah. with it. So like, Fireball oops, became yeah. a huge issue that she was <laughs> regaining her third level spell slot by killing. And, yeah, it was. I mean, that was my motivation for having that part of the conversation was to go. Right. You know, it sucks to go to your player and say, "Hey, I got to nerf this thing, cool thing that I gave you." Right, right, right. But right, right. Uh, in the interest of everyone still having a great time at the table, it's got to happen. Right. You know, uh, as as. But, I think to that, I think one thing that that stops that from being an issue is I equally come to my players to try and buff them as I do to nerf them. You know it, what I mean? Exactly. And I think that's a huge like, part of that trust hey, so relationship. How are you feeling about where your character's at right now? Cause I feel like you could totally do like, you know, and I have a whole bonus level at perk homebrew. That's my player's favorite homebrew. Yeah. And I think Dungeons and Dragons, uh, spoiler alert. I think they're moving towards this, uh, with some of their stuff about these, bonus level up perks they're calling them like bonus feats or something or extra background feats or whatever ha have you got a gonna... lawyer on retainer yet <laughs> uh, <laughs> technically yes kind of yeah so <laughs> all right I, i'll be i'll be watching for that in the news because i I'll, I'll be there as a witness if uh if you need someone to vouch that dungeon coach was doing I it, did first. it first i did it first yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah um but uh yeah so i think the I think the, those type of homebrews, the players love them. They engage with them, all that kind of stuff. But the, see, where were we even talking about? We started talking about lawyers and now I'm. I, oh, uh, so I know the, the legal train can uh, get you. Done. You're talking about coming to your players with both buffs and nerfs when yes, you've got to balance go. your Okay, homebrews. cool, yeah. cool, cool. And yeah. the bonus level of perks are the buffs and stuff. Yeah. So uh, I have that relationship, which I think is very important to have to, hey, this is really cool. What if we add in this thing that you can do? Or I saw that you were doing this. Let's upgrade this. And I have this like everyone's at a certain spot, but there's this buffer of wiggle room to where I, I if and we also understand between each other where if your character's a little weaker. All right, cool. Let's look for a window to upgrade you. Maybe not right now, right now, right now. Right. But let's look for that cool thing and then add it in there. Yeah. Yeah. And I love being able to find narrative space to introduce that rather mm -hmm. than just going, you know, on the spot, here, here's your plus two, here's your plus one or whatever, yeah. you know, whatever it's going to be. Right, so, right, right, right. Um, so I kind of pivoting away from the, uh, the player initiate initiated versus DM initiated homebrew, mm -hmm. I guess, um, kind of the the initial preface of this whole conversation was kind of these two categories that I think of as as being the mechanical and the yeah, uh yeah. <laughs> let's say immersion or tonal oriented yeah. homebrew um I'm I am in the presence of the master here so please if there's a third <laughs> category uh I I'd, I'd love some enlightenment ah. and if not uh, give me some elaboration on your thoughts on those two categories and kind of um you know why yeah. when when do you look at bringing bringing those elements into your own games yeah i i would say my three categories because i would say three categories you very smoothly combined two of them technically into one of just saying mechanics um but most of the homebrews when i first started were those moments that just feel bad like that's how it works yeah. this is dumb like the first thing for me was death saves 
I thought death saves were so dumb. Like you're telling me, and there was a moment that happened where I was a barbarian, I was about to go down and there was a healer that could heal me. And they said, no, I'm going to do a, use my spell. Like I'm going to damage somebody this round. You'll go down next round. There's only one enemy left. They could not deal enough damage to give you death save. Like they've worked it all out in their head. Yeah. And then, and then sure enough, I go down and then uh, they heal me the next turn and I'm back up. And I was like, that was so dumb. Like yeah. there's no way that that should be where your friend's there and you can have, whether it's metagaming or not or whatever. It, 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 that's the thing is it shouldn't feel, to not metagame shouldn't feel bad be, and be so suboptimal. You should be able to play optimally and it not be, again, you know, it, it be still not metagaming, right? I, and so I love, that I love was that. terrible take that verbiage on it. I hadn't, uh, conceptualized it in that way. Right. Um, but I love that. The, I'm, I'm going to have to crunch on that for a little while, especially as I'm watching more of your content, <laughs> but this idea right. of, because I am, I am wholly anti metagame. As far as I'm concerned, right. your players have stepped out of their, right. their characters. And, right. um, and I love the idea about using homebrew as a tool to uh, effectively mask optimized action into, right. into something that still remains in game in character. Yeah, emerged. for sure. I love that. Yeah. I like the mass optimized actions. Yeah. And then uh, you've almost even added a fourth lo- layer of homebrew is to prevent, prevent metagaming, but to clarify what I mean by metagaming, because I feel like most times when people hear metagaming, they're not thinking of it the way I'm trying to say it is I want to protect my players metagame. Like I want to protect them from ever having to be exposed to it, right? I right. don't want them to see it. I want them to be in a spot where they could hear it, right? So if I, I'm going to whisper at the table, the f- whispering at tables prevents that metagaming. I could easily just say it and be like, you guys don't know that. But that's lame as heck, man. <laughs> like, 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 sure, I, I trust all my players to not metagame. I think I said like my... They are the strongest not metagamers. I give inspiration out for all the different times where they wouldn't know or they didn't know that happened last session, all this stuff. But like, I don't want them to be in that spot to have to not do that. So it's on me to come up with secret role homebrews or whatever type of thing I need to do right. to prevent that from happening. And I have a, I mean, this is, okay. I'm going to, I'm going to say, I'm going to say this because this is, I think appropriate. Um, and we're probably going to go over time, but it's totally fine. This is, this is totally worth it. Okay, cool. I'm, <laughs> is, I'm ready to hear um, um, So, Last session that ended on right before they're having a combat. They're having a combat with a memory mage, like this memory altering, like they just, all they do is mess with your memory. Yeah, yeah. They're inside of a completely like a resort that's just a brainwash facility. And this this is like the high main mage of this whole thing, right? Gotcha. Okay. So the, cool. the, the session ends and the person appears and they're about to throw down and we ended the session. So I had all this time to kind of get ready and do all this stuff, but... How does a memory mage, how, like, how did it, what would they do? What would they do? What would they do? And I was like, oh my gosh, they would implant themselves into the other, their, these people, the players' minds as someone important to make them doubt if they should kill them or not, to make them doubt if they should, you know, to protect themselves, to Absolutely. even give a moment of hesitation for the, to, to strike them down. So what I did is I sent an individual video to each of my players one of like each of the four players and i was like all right i'm only sending this to you and so i I literally i lied my ass off to them and i was like look whenever you one of them's a warforge and when he was awakened there was this person and this other thing and that's his backstory i was like look you have a memory you as soon as this thing happens you wake up and you turn and the two people you woke up next to you pan your vision over and you see this person this person's a part of your backstory they helped awaken you you now and they're like and so his he was mind-blowing he's like oh my gosh this person's a part of my backstory i love that i had that same conversation with every single player (laughs) one of the the person that saved you remember the old the old woman that saved you from the thing that's them and they're like oh my gosh so like this person so what happened though is now I've technically lied to all of them, but I did this in a in a anti metagaming way. So here's how I ran it at the table. They all came to the table. We sat down. I hadn't asked for initiative to be rolled yet. I said I need everybody to roll a d20 for me. Just everybody roll a d20. This was an intelligent saving throw that I did not say intelligent saving throw because if I say that they're going to be like something's happening to my mind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? No, I love that. And then yeah. I, I looked at the back of my DM screen, which I have all of their stuff written down on, and I looked at the intelligent save column, and they told me their numbers. I added their intelligent save modifier to it, and I knew what their intelligent save was. Only one of them succeeded. So then I went and whispered that player, 
that video I sent you was all bullshit. Like I just, it's all a lie. I love it's that. all a that, lie. That is such a an awesome, sophisticated means <laughs> of turning the entire game on its ear. Right. And I, I but I, what's yeah. crazy is like all these players now. There was multiple times where they asked me like, "What was their their name?" And so like like they didn't put it together that they think differently of this person. And this one, uh, so this one player that knew there was a lie, um, the whole thing ended up going to. Uh, it would be a whole long thing to explain that. Basically, <laughs> the thought that that player had that this person came from their backstory caused him to do a move that changed the game. And then he found out from that move that he did something with memory and it shattered the memory and it brought everybody's memories back. And all this other stuff happened from the thing in action he did from the thought he had that was wrong. So, yeah. So that moment can't happen if I'm like, all right, guys. Okay. So you think this person's from your backstory? Like, come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. The mind blow they had at the table, like an hour into the combat. We're like, wait, this person, they're not this person. Like, that they literally felt like they got into their head yeah. and that, that cause it, cause I did literally in real life get into their head. Yeah. So that's one level of homebrew or approach to the game to try and do to prevent. Yeah. And that's, that's actually, as you were saying that, uh, and I think it's, it would be a difficult one to articulate, but, uh, <laughs> right. it is a very special kind of homebrew to actually kind of create a sub game outside of the table, outside <laughs> of the, that is that when they sit down is going to, I mean, clearly so thoroughly enhance the experience <laughs> yeah, through that. Right. And, and there, I mean, to, to your point there, there are, there really is no way that you could achieve that by asking them to right. separate character and player knowledge. It's just not oh, going to happen. You can't. So sure. Yeah. They, they, their characters could act and made the same choices because they weren't acting on the information or acting like they knew the person or something. Sure. But the experience, the yeah. visceral experience at the table, I want my players to be as synced up to their characters as possible yeah. and that they experience the same thing together. So I would say that you've actually unlocked a fourth level of, of where my, where my homebrews come from. Cause that wouldn't have been possible without a secret role homebrew. I have a whole video with like three or four different methods of employing secret home, secret roles, right, whether it's right. the player, you lift up your screen, the player rolls the D 20 underneath your DM screen and you shut it down like a drawbridge and you see it, but they don't, you know, whatever. Gotcha. Um, so those homebrews, I think that's a fourth category that we found here, but the first category that you talked about, I would say mine is those bad feelings like the death saves. So I have an, I have like six different homebrews for death saves and I have so many because it's going to be so for different players and different tables and all that stuff. Right. Right. Um, and then the third one is a, a, uh, efficiency like we've talked about it before is what like trying to speed up the game or make the game smoother and more efficient um and not just like oh i'll handle this after the session but like literally let's let I, I, a skirmish initiative system like it's going to be it's right. going to be faster right. uh theater of the mind type of things and different homebrews you can implement during theater of the mind to make that go faster one um, one that i really loved uh i, I mean i with the group I, I, my main group that I play with now, we uh, we ran an entire campaign in 4E. I am not a 4E fan, uh, but like <laughs> many people, uh, I do think that they got the skill challenges right. And one in the in the interest of efficiency that I loved both both the the homebrew the the single round. Uh, uh, the the one round. I was round about skill to set. say that. Bro. I, I love so that, funny. And, and I love the example in the video was just such mm -hmm. a hype example that, that I mean, right. anyone watching that who didn't immediately go like, I'm scrapping that next combat. We're doing that. We're doing it. <laughs> We're doing it as a skill challenge. You know, and I don't implement them as much as, uh, as I probably awesome. should. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, but that immediately jumped to mind in terms of efficiency, you know, a, right. a combat, uh, anyone who's run the game or played the game knows yeah. that, you know, that could be half your session. That could be your whole session. Right. If it's a, if it's a really big combat. And I created that system for my high school D and D group. Like I oh, was, a, cool. a, okay. I had a high school D and D group. They were my, I, I coached pole vaulting. My varsity pole vault team were, we had a D and D's group. Like they, so like in the time, like they make characters in between the tracks and track meets and stuff. And so we would play after Very school cool. in the room and stuff. Um, and I was like, man, there's, I just can't get through a lot. Like, and we can't run combat off, not with a table and the minis and stuff. It'd be theater of the mind. Sure. But then that's really hard to try. I was like, I want to be able to get across combats and big moments yeah. In one round. And like, what are you, you have one shot. What do you do in this round? Let's right. see how it goes. And yeah. it's just, it was, it was, it was awesome. I play tested it with them multiple times and that's where one of the stories came from. And then I use it all the time now. Uh, well, and I, I know we're getting basically kind of uh, down on the time limit. I would love to pick your brain more on Ooh. 
on fourth one, fourth oh, one, yeah. fourth one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is, yeah. Uh, fourth one is the uh, oh my gosh, we said uh, mechanics. Um, uh, oh, the theme. Sorry, the fourth yep. one's the theme. Well, I guess I guess metagaming is the fourth one. So technically, the third one would be theme and getting across like some sort of like you said tonal homebrew so i totally agree with that but like a lot of the survival type rules that i've implemented i had a whole video on like horror when icewind dale came out i had like 30 or 50 different homebrews that i came up with for set it like establishing that tension or at the table right, or right. It, it, if you want to have a feel like there was one time uh, encumbrance is always a big thing but I, in general, I don't run encumbrance. Now we use logic and stuff and you can't, don't, don't make me pull up, don't make me check your, <laughs> um, but there was a time when my players were going to go and delve into a green dragon's lair and they had to get a lot of stuff out of it. One of them was an anvil. Another thing was like a stat, like these petrified people. And like, I didn't just want to let that. I knew ahead of time. I didn't want them to be able to run in there and be like, oh, let's go. Let's, we have everything. We just took everything. And I knew I was going to throw a horde at them. Right. So I had uh, the experience I was trying to pr prepare for them is you have a anvil that you need to get for very big lore reasons. You have literal people that you're trying to save as heavy, heavy statues. And there's a dragon's horde that you're going to have a lot of gold from. What are you going to do with your weight? How much are you going to get? What things you like, like what's, what's the cost? But do you save another person or do you take a thousand more gold? You know, right, like what right. are you going to do? So I, I implemented, I told them while you are inside of this cave, we are implementing a homebrew. I call it a stone system. It's an encumbrance stones. Um, and we are using the system. Here's how it works. I gave everybody the rundown. We are tracking it this way. And at the beginning of the session, we made sure everybody was up to date with all their sheets. And here we go. Right. And it, it was yeah. a very much so like almost like a little mini game of like, careful. Can we carry this? I don't know if we can carry this because, oh, we found a person. Can we carry them? Let's put them here. And then we can, you know, so like it was, it totally right, hit right. the theme and tone I wanted because of the homebrew. So there's yeah. the four categories. <laughs> yeah. No, and I, and I love that. Uh, we just less than a week ago finished shooting a, a split screen episode on kind of uh, old school Renaissance, old school revival versus kind of the five E these two. Yeah. And, and one of the things that we really honed in on was taking something that feels very, take, really taking kind of that system, but only implementing it modularly into your 5e right. tables which sounds yes. almost exactly yes. like uh exactly. kind of you know where you're, you're thinking more about encumbrance you're thinking about your torch count a lot more carefully you're right. thinking about your you know and uh and it's really cool for predominantly 5e tables i mean we definitely run a 5e right. kind of new school mm -hmm. table uh type of table yeah um in the interest of contrast at your table giving them that kind of uh old school shakedown uh, right. And I mean, again, uh, like figuring out how to get those statues and that anvil out uh, isn't the first thing that comes <laughs> right. to mind for a five E kind of a, a right. table. And 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 it's uh, just and hand waved, right? yeah, understandably and, so. Yeah, but. And, but but if properly tailored, can actually be a really rewarding experience. And it sounds oh, like yeah, you know, if sure. uh, given the level of thought that you uh, and and again uh, consideration of homebrew that you that you put into it, um, that's a, a a really cool deal. Just like I said, th those cool elements that you can grab from older systems, from other systems, from other creators yeah. uh, in the YouTube space and the broader right. social media. Um, like I said, I know we're getting on to time, so uh, uh, I, I I really actually would love to just give you an opportunity to uh, just kind of give everyone an idea, a little bit of a rundown of you know what you've been crunching on. I did have one final question. I promise it would be yeah. short, but I don't want to I don't want to push your time here. If, uh, You're good. You're okay. good, dude. The this final is question is of that breadth of work, which is. Uh, for, for those of you at home who are watching, if you are have not seen what this man has been up to, uh, you got to get over there and check out uh, what he's been doing. It is it is an unnerving amount of content, uh, but uh, it is crazy when you when you really put it out there. I'm like, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, it's, I but, mean, it's uh, and, and honestly, a quick shout like shout out to my team. Like, I it's not just me by myself. You know what I mean? Like I, this, like the amount of people that have grown into the community of the, the people that watch the videos and then the people that have go support me the next level support me. And then the people that are actually making content with me. And like, I'm really bad at words and grammar. And like, I have a full team of ed editors to 
<laughs> like, this is a really cool idea. Here it is. Bang. And then like, here's how you should say it though. It's <laughs> so that people can it's a, digest it smoothly. Cause right, I can right. explain things very well in a video, but in a written form, it's not. So without, without the, the team, it wouldn't be possible that all the artists and all that kind of stuff. It's been huge. The, the, it's been crazy for the amount of people that have really gotten in and behind and some of the people, the ideas and the think tank, the, what the stuff that we create, I think is such a high quality because there are so many people behind it. And we're not just, it's not just me in, a, in this room by myself, just coming up, this would be cool. Yeah. Right, you know, right. like it, it goes through at least, I would say seven people see it like seven different people that are review it, refine it. We play it like, the, like it goes through so much and it gets refined so much to be able to get to the spot. And that's why I always tell people when they make their own homebrews, share it with other people, share it with other yeah. DMs, share it in the discord communities, whatever, like share it around. And people can be like, you know what? That's kind of dumb because the same, this paladin at third level can do this thing that that thing that, you know, and they're like, Oh, I didn't even, wow. You know, so we're right. all better together. So yeah, yeah, there's the, the shout out to them, but well, it, um, it, it definitely shows in the final product that, I mean, how much effort is going into it. Uh, they are all awesome. <laughs> the, the, the question at hand is of everything that you have put out, is there a piece of material you've put out, you know, for us to consume uh -huh. that that really, I mean, you consider to be your the creme de la creme of of the dungeon coach enterprise? That's so hard. That's so hard. I would say, um, if I I I have to the three, I have to say three things. Okay? All right, all right, I'll I, give you three. I'll give you yeah, three. Top three. Top all right, three. Top three. Yeah, yeah. I'd love um, to hear them. Um, which. Okay, technically four. Okay, <laughs> it's so hard to pick. Um, I already mentioned one is the bonus level of perks. I have I have uh, uh, I have two full volumes on my website of just over two hundred different perks that you can give based on every subclass, based on every class, general, social, explore, all these different things of just like my player's trying to do this crazy cool thing. Let me give them this to let them do that cool thing they want to do even more, right? right? And just rewarding them for how they're playing the game so that I, I've had, I, I had three warlocks in one campaign and they were all vastly different. <laughs> Granted, their subclasses were different, sure. But right. even then, everything's so different. So that's one of the things that's in my player's favorite, but it's not necessarily a game system. It's more of a character, kind of like we said, even right. like individual, right? So broad now, that, that, that had to just, that's just so much fun. And it's honestly one of my favorite things to do as a dungeon master is to give those out because yeah. yep. the players don't know what they are. And when I tell them, they're like, I can do that now. It's so fun. Yeah. Um, but then everything else is everything in the Alcanor's Almanac of all things. And I titled it all things because it's all three pillars coming together with like, we even mentioned death saves. I have, I think seven different rules for death saves in that book of different ways to do it. And it's not like I want you to use all of them. You literally can't use to all of them. Right, right, it's right. Which one speaks the most to you? And you could even, I could come up with one right now of two different ones combined together. You know what I'm saying? And that's what, that's where I want your, everyone's heads to be. So yeah. anyway, um, rest system, I would say is a, a huge one for me. It has, I've, I've heard so many dungeon masters, uh, worry about long rest and short rest and my players keep short resting players keep long resting and it throws right, off right. the balance of what i had going and the long rest system i think has been one of the biggest testimonials if i could find and compile comments over the years of just like i just and it just has, it solves so many problems and i have known none of these problems because of it and i think that's huge for me yeah um uh the martial combat and the whole martial combat overhaul has been the most popular thing I've made. If, if you look at just like numbers of things from the oh, website, okay. of how many people? Yeah, I mean, I guess that that should have like kind numerically of been dovetailed yeah, into my question, but uh, it's well, I, and that's so. Yeah, I guess my my player's favorite is the bonus level of perks, probably because they get cool shiny things and their characters can do stuff. <laughs> but those, uh, those damn players, those damn players. <laughs> my favorite might be the rest system because it helps my life. And then numerically from like the public's opinion, I guess, has been the ma the martial combat overhaul to where it just spices up instead of attack, attack. It's different weapons do different things. Every weapon has an active, a passive and other effects, uh, different things you can do with a shield to actually play defensively to where you could raise a shield and block with a shield and block an ally with a shield, different yeah. reactions besides just opportunity attacks. Um, uh, spell cast well spell casting gets i guess into another thing but all of that i think is a huge um quality of life that i've seen the most response from people just loving uh, in general and the one that nobody's seen yet is mass combat and that's going to be i think the one that might shake up the game 
more than anything I might have ever made. It's just okay. because it's such a thing. It's such a thing in just the community of mass combat. Right. And it's right. not, there's nothing for it except for Matt Colville's situation. Right. And it's a full book. Right. My mass combat system is, I think it's going to be about 15 pages total. And okay. I would, I would say you only need probably six of those pages and you can run mass combat and it's going to feel like combat. It's not a new system. It's baked into the, the thing of combat and it's just you running a army behind you and it's your player boosting the army behind you. And the, I mean, it's just, yeah. So it's going to be super simple, but I, I will be keeping my everything. eyes out for that one, especially because <laughs> our campaign is gradually working towards uh, the, the party's actively rallying Ooh. allies for kind of a final grand I mean, we're, we're at level 11 and this is a one to 20. So we got a ways to go, but yeah, they yeah. already know they're on a trajectory of building an army. And uh, I've got some of my own thoughts on what I want to do. I know yeah. that, uh, that uh, I, I will absolutely be able to graft some of what you're doing uh, into that. So uh, I love it. Uh, um, one point on. And another Marshall thing. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cause I, you were talking about mass combat and I, and I wanted to hit on this because this popped in my head during our conversation. Um, I didn't want to slip through the cracks again is changing stuff, odd modifying stuff. While I was making my mass combat rules, I've played them multiple times over about probably three years worth of like different iterations and play testing. Literally in the final parts of play testing, I ran it for this, the campaign I have right now. And I was like, all right, I'm going to run it exactly as it is right now. I'm going to perfectly run it off. I ran it off and we had, it lasted for, you know, we went through this whole, it was, you know, we, our sessions are about three hours. This combat started about an uh, hour and a half in. So we didn't finish the combat okay. and I made changes in the interim between then and now I, I made changes to the initiative system of how initiative works because it was too clunky and stupid because the archers needed to move, but then the infantry was blocking the archers. So then they couldn't move and it was kind of done. So gotcha. now the homebrew is they go in the order based on the thing. So the, these always go first and then the archeries go. And so there's like a macro initiative of the troops and then a micro initiative of everything else. Oh, I, and I it's just love so that smooth layered system in terms of yeah. keeping the pace rolling. And uh, yeah, and it feels just like initiative and it's very obvious. And then the next session, I was like, Hey guys, these are the changes we're making. And they understood that like, <laughs> I'm crazy and I'm doing this whole homebrew thing and they know who they're dealing with. Um, so uh, they're like, Oh sweet, cool. And then we played it and it felt just so much better immediately. So never be afraid to tweak stuff. So that also matches up to what we said before. So right on. Yeah. I, I love it, man. You are clearly a, uh, a man dedicated to your craft. Uh, and, <laughs> and, uh, you know, there's so many people out there who are obviously reaping the benefit of, uh, yours and your, your team's hard work. Um, you know, I like I said, I, I I've said it about three times now. I keep uh, we keep treading on your uh, on <laughs> on your time here, so I, I don't want to uh, go any further. But uh, Dungeon Coach, man, it was it was an absolute pleasure sitting down and talking with you. I would love to uh, as different topics come up down the road. Um, I I'd love to be able to sit down and talk with you again. But uh, this this has been a yeah, blast, man, sure. and uh, and I will certainly be. Uh, keeping my ear to the ground for, uh, for everything that's coming it. down the pipeline. And uh, other than that, you got any last uh, any last words for anyone watching out there? No, I mean I appreciate you uh, coming to me and approaching me and asking me to do this because I am crazy busy with time, and I appreciate even you saying all the stuff you had with time and all this kind of stuff. And and yeah, I think I definitely do stretch myself too thin with time. <laughs> so <laughs> that's something I've learned in this whole process. But. It's honestly, you're a super cool dude, and I think your channel is going to be super great. And I hope that uh, I can play some factor in that. And uh, uh, I'm going to see if the Dungeon Crew can come show you some love. And I hope they hope oh, they man. do. Leave them comments, guys, down there. Oh, show man. them some love. Well, if, now that he said it, see if I had said it, uh, bump kiss. But uh, the man himself <laughs> hit that like no, button I, for the dude. I, There's a red subscribe button. It takes half a second. If you just go down there and click it, it does nothing essentially, but help him for so. Oh, yeah, appreciate you, you guys. You, you are uh, are too kind, <laughs> sir. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, beyond that, we've got a little tradition here on signing off on all oh, of our no. videos. After uh, the don't sign worry, in, I'm worried about this. Don't, don't worry. No, no, this is really easy. A lot of you, you're you know how many people have gone like, oh no, they've got a tradition. It's uh, no, they uh, we sign off with the phrase, "The world is yours." I generally Ooh, do the okay. honors because I'm the only yeah. one on. Yeah, yeah, cool. uh, in, in whatever whatever fashion you see fit, if you would do the honors, sir. Uh, but I will say to everyone at home, thank you guys so much for joining us this time. Until next time, the world is yours. <laughs>